Hello everybody, welcome back to the fifth module of scientific foundations of stress. Today we are going to talk about stress in college life. Uh, for this session we are giving a separate uh, chapter, separate discussion to stress in college life because I feel that this is a very important time of our lives and this is a place of transition. So, if at this stage an individual cannot deal with things effectively, then these stresses may have a long term impact on an individual's life basically be it on the physiological aspects or on the psychological aspects of life. So, uh, today's session we will talk about the stresses in college life, what are the signals of stress that you have to understand, that you have to focus, keep in mind if you are a student or if you are a teacher and the effects of stress and how to deal with it. How do different colleges across the world are deal with the stress, stressful levels of students? We will also discuss that a little in brief. To start off our uh, discussion, I shall focus on a few case vignettes, things that I have seen as a psychologist in a college and uh, to take case 1, it is about a student named A C who comes around with a problem of low grades. Now, this is a very common uh, issue with many students. Now, A C reports that he has low grades and that is why he does not feel like going to class. He is uh, one of the, he was one of the toppers in his school, in his village, in his town and uh, in his state he was one of the rank holders. So, this is the first time in his life that he is uh, not performing well. So, this is uh, AC's problem is not a new one and AC's problem is faced by many students uh, who are staying, who are in college and who are undergoing the pressures and the stresses of college life. So, how did A C respond to his low grades? So, the he uh, started, he stopped going to the classes and initially before his uh, mid sem exams, he thought that well if I, I, I do not want to go right now, I would rather take some few days off study in my uh, room, in my hostel room and that would help me to deal with things better. But as the days went by, the avoidance behavior of going to the classes increased or I should say the anxiety increased and with time he stopped going to classes, he did not take his mid sems and after that he also did dreaded to go to classes before his end sem exams and finally, he did not appear for the finals as well. He did not have the, the re prerequisites to attend the exam, his uh, attendance was low. Now, this is one case as I have mentioned is a very frequent thing we come across amongst college students all across the world. The second one is about B D. B D came from a different part of the country and he was not familiar with the language. Now, the lang uh, his regional language that he spoke, his mother tongue that he spoke was different from many uh, other people in his college. So, they spoke a different language and he was also not well versed in English in which the academics was being conducted. Now, B D was also undergoing stress because of a problem with his second language acquisition. Now, what did that result into? He stopped interacting with others. So, since he could not express his opinions, his ideas, his views in a second language. So, he stopped interacting with people, he spent more time indoors in his room and occasionally with one or two few friends who spoke his mother tongue. Now, this is also a very common feature with students traveling different lands to study. We often come across students who have gone uh, to the west to study and are facing problems with the language, with the other um, food habits, the temperature, the climate, weather conditions etcetera and also the attitudes of people. 
Now, it says it's also something that we come across in India, where students from different states, when they come and study in other, uh, another other states, also face the same issue. Now, the resultant behavior in case of BD is also uh, stress. So he also he started avoiding people. He became withdrawn, and he spent more time indoors on his laptop, either on social networking or watching movies. So, this is our playing games. This, this is again another stressor for a student during the college years. The third case we are going to talk about is E. G. who is a senior student and he uh, was married and he was uh, doing his uh, research where he complained about not being able to balance his academics and his family. This is also another problem that college students go through. As this is the time for transition and senior many of the senior students have uh, to take responsibility of families. So, either they are married or they have uh, family responsibilities at home that needs to be addressed. It becomes a problem for them to cope with the pressures of academics, the daily pressures as well as the family pressures. Now, in the case of E. G., E. G.'s uh, wife and child also lived on campus, also lived nearby, but he had to divide his time between his academics, his lab work, which many times continued for hours at end and again spent time with his family, with his child, wife and child. Now, um, the, this was a cause of stress because he could not distribute his time over uh, the two equally and he actually did not know what to do. Now, these are some of the things that we generally come across in uh, most of the students. So, I have just given you three examples real time examples that I have come through come across as a psychologist and we will discuss that what are the other things that a college student goes through. Clearly, case 1 and case 3 are two different people having different problems, but in case 2 as well, but uh, the age difference between case 1, 2 and case 3 are um, di a lot, but it still it shows us that what are the different varied kinds of problems that college students have to clearly go through and deal with. Now, uh, to that brings us to the developmental tasks during college years. College expects us to be emotionally independent from the family. We are this is a transitional time where a student is moving from home to uh, uh, an independent setting. If it is a residential setting, all the more uh, independent, doing things by himself, dealing with things, taking decisions for himself. And now again is also uh, not uh, has to take care of his emotional uh, distortions as well as emotional distress by himself or uh, relate to his other friends and not run back to his family. This is a problem uh, that we come across in India more so because still 18 years of life we often see students or maybe a little later too staying with their parents and where parents uh, play a law, huge responsibility in taking decisions for them. Now, uh, so college years expect you to be emotionally independent and choose and prepare for a career. So, a student comes to college looking forward to a career either in academics or in uh, a job setting. And this decision making very frequently becomes a, a huge task by itself. Many students who are uh, good in academics are expected to uh, stay in academics for, a, uh, for their career options, but many times the selection of a career is a confusion because the student may want to do something else that is in no way related to what his parents want him to do or what uh, the others, his teachers, others expect him to do. And that is why this de independent decision of taking responsibility and selecting a career and uh, dealing with the stresses of that career option 
also become an important developmental task. Uh, preparing for emotional commitment and family life is another new step that comes at this phase of life. So, the student has moved from the adolescent years to adulthood and during this young uh, adulthood period, they have to uh, take decisions for uh, moving into the next phase of family life. So, taking responsibility for another individual and uh, uh, building up a family is a huge developmental task and of course, building an ethical system of his own. So, so far uh, there were uh, the ethics uh, were as per the family, as per the school system that the student followed. But during this phase of life, the student selects, the college student selects his, uh, has uh, deterministic ideas about his ethical values in life, things that he prefers, he wants to follow and that may be very different from what his family has expected him to do. Above all, the college years has the primary a, in a focus of college life is academics and this. So, imagine a student has to carry on with the, all these developmental tasks along with maintaining an equal focus on academics. Now, academics by itself can be a stressor. So, to perform in academics and um, be consistent in uh, performing well in academics is by itself a huge stressor for the student. So, managing these transitional changes requires the college students to develop new roles and modify the old ones. As I was talking about the ethical system also and building an emotional independence from the family, taking autonomy and taking responsibility for one's actions. So, these all these factors together can build up a lot of stress within the individual. So, some of the chronic stressors during college life what I have done is I have divided into this into two parts as in what are the primary stressors faced by students, uh, the younger students that is the freshers and the first uh, second years and uh, third years and then we go into the uh, stressors faced by the senior students. So, students who are completing their uh, academics or uh, they are completing their research uh, areas. So, they are, so this group the age group is uh, distinctly different from, uh, so the younger student or the fresher has just left home and joined college. So, it requires a lot of adjustment issues as I was talking about the first uh, case today. Mm, he has uh, and also the second one, uh, they have come from different places and uh, to, uh, they have to adjust to a new college setting and with their new food habits, build up new habits of staying alone in a hostel room and uh, also with the climate c climatic conditions and the people around them. So, imagine somebody who was uh, uh, brought up in uh, Chennai has suddenly to go and live somewhere in Delhi for the first time or say somebody who has spent his um, childhood years, his school years in Dehradun has to come and stay in Kharagpur. So, the weather conditions are very different, the language people speak are very different and also the way uh, the, the food habits, the way uh, the customs are carried out are entirely different. So, think about a senior student in this uh, stress may also happen to somebody who is travelling uh, across the world may be uh, to, uh, uh, to a different country say uh, to study uh, for his postdoc or say for his PhD. So, there also uh, the adjustment stage is uh, causes a lot of stress because that is the time when you have to really adopt yourself and ad adapt yourself to the surroundings. Now, grades and performance, the first when the fresher joins the college, 
So, getting accustomed to these things and also maintaining grades and performance is very important. So, think about a student who has been um, uh, very good in his academic life uh, during his school years, has ranked and uh, on national levels and then uh, has come to uh, college, a well reputed college and thereafter his grades are not as uh, good as it was during the school years that by itself would be a stressor. So, the problem is that when you are going up to college, the school was a small setting where you were uh, presented with accolades and appreciated by uh, teachers and parents and everybody around you. But the col in college, there are many more like you and the student starts feel feeling like a small fish in a large ocean. So, it is uh, this exposure, this first exposure to a new world is always stressful. So, it is uh, imagine the how, how much of extra stress and additional stress that the student is going through when he has just come to college. So, adjusting to uh, the environment and adjusting to uh, this uh, rebuilding your own self concept that well I am good, but there are others who are like me or maybe better. So, this adjustment the person who can do this adjustment well will actually um, resort to more adaptive behavioral patterns. A person who does not will actually again start uh, missing out classes or uh, not adapt to his surroundings and that may affect his uh, physiology as well. Communication skills. So, I was talking about uh, developing communication skills. Uh, one of the problems uh, in uh, the school setting is we do not uh, entertain, encourage uh, too much of um, interactions. If, uh, if it is a good student who is studying for a longer time and is not um, interacting with uh, people much, that uh, is uh, not seen as a demerit or that is not seen as a limitation, but with time we see that communication skills is very uh, imp becomes a very important factor for adjustment during college years. So, how I understand people, how I uh, uh, effectively present myself during social interactions is one of the major stressors to a student during his college years. And as I, as a psychologist, I often come across a lot of students who uh, have more stress because of their communication skills. This, if it is not dealt with properly during the um, fresher years, it becomes a problem later on when people go for placement. And more so, as I was saying earlier, that many students carry this idea that, well, I am not uh, good enough, and it lowers their self esteem. And even in the, in the latter part of life, unless there are really good positive. Um, events uh, they have they carry this idea of low self esteem that I, I cannot speak in public or I cannot uh, carry on with a good conversation. Now, this could be easily dealt with during the preliminary years. Now, another major uh, stressor during uh, the first and second year of college is getting involved in college activities. So, imagine a student who has come from a school setting uh, where he has studied a lot, he has worked hard and now entered a college setting with a lot of uh, activities to uh, join. So, it is a, it's a huge new world in front of him. So, think about a student like this who gets involved in several activities. Now, balancing academics and mind you in a residential college setting like ours, we see students uh, have a problem with balancing their social activities as well as academics. So, we often come across students getting into too many uh, social activities in our um, too many clubs and societies, but later on uh, not being uh, able to fulfill the requirements of all and there uh, it is affecting their academics. So, as I was mentioning right now balancing academics and social in involvements often become a problem. 
So, of course, we do see a lot of students later on, uh, once they two, after two, three years of uh, stay in college, they um, reduce the number of at activities to a selected few of their interests. But many times, the damage has already been done and they it affects their personality, also the stress affects their uh, physiological well-being and subjective well-being. Uh, for the senior student, and here I am talking of students who are uh, just passing out uh, of college or uh, think about students who are uh, say from UG or PG level and uh, students who are finishing with their uh, research um, and, uh, doctoral degrees in college. For them, it is uh, the career decisions take a priori a pri in their uh, life. So, there um, whether uh, how will I whether this is a good career decision whether I am taking the right step moving towards academics and sometimes the future is pretty unknown to them. So, what do I do where do I go these questions are uh, they, they are their minds are filled up with such questions. Relationship issues by now uh, the, uh, the, uh, they, they have to move into the next phase of life of getting settled and relationship issues also take an important part. And if there are, so if there are uh, breakups or uh, you know even plans for uh, settling down, these things often cause more stress in the individual family responsibilities also increase and if a student is married then as I have mentioned earlier balancing uh, as we saw in EG's case the third case that I was talking of the balancing the family life and academics becomes a huge problem. So, and another question that I am often faced with by students is why am I doing this or what am I doing? So, why am I running for uh, especially during the placement season or almost at the end of their um, career in uh, the college? Uh, I often come across this question by students where they say that uh, whether uh, I am, uh, it is not about uh, whether I am taking it is this is a good job or that is a good job, it is more about whether uh, why am I doing this, whether uh, this is the thing for me. So, sometimes there is a sense of uh, uh, existential crisis where the student tries to look for meaning in life. So, it goes beyond the uh, financial aspects, the power aspect, the uh, future prospects. It is more about um, identifying and it is more of philosophizing what uh, who I am and where I am and what exactly do I want to do. So, these questions become very important to the student at this phase of life. So, we have seen that the senior student as well as the junior student uh, the younger one who has just joined college have their different kinds of stresses. And so, imagine as I was mentioning that it is a whole lot of thing that the student has to go through and above all in academics there is always the pressure of time and there is the pressure to perform. So, no matter what additional problems you have these are in, an, in addition to it or the primary prima facie you have to see uh, that your submissions are on time, that your presentations are on time, that you have uh, performed well in the exam and you have been there on time. So, these are huge stresses for the student. Now, talking about the stress signals, if you are a student and if you are facing these things in your life. So, be it that you are from an engineering school or you are a med school or from any other uh, college. And if you have these any of these stress signals then please wait, pause and think about it. What is actually causing these factors. Now, several times these come to us as uh, cognitive uh, problems. Of course, the student does not come and tell, tell us that ma'am I have difficulty concentrating and I am having clinical depression. It is not like that. They will present as I cannot uh, remember things, I cannot concentrate, I have uh, problems in attending to things, I do not have interest in anything. I have trouble completing my, completing my assignments on time, 
I am not going to class, I uh, feel snappy and irritated very often. So, anybody tells me anything, you know, I get easily angry and you know, somehow my just uh, the um, uh, lid goes off and I feel like just bashing that person. And uh, students often complain of tension headaches, tight muscles, tightness in muscles, and they, they will not tell you tension headaches, they will just say that there is this headache and there is this uh, overall pain and uh, there are uh, there is a loss of appetite and uh, I often come across students surviving on uh, chips and um, snacks and there is a severe change in sleeping habits. So, these things are very frequently seen among students. And another uh, very important thing that I come across is excessive fatigue and loss of interest. I do not feel like doing anything, I do not feel uh, like um, I do not have the energy for anything, I feel very exhausted and uh, it just seems that the day is not carrying on at all. Now, these are some of the signals that you need to uh, watch out for if you are a student or if you are uh, the guardian of a student and um, you should stop and check out what whether how many of these symptoms you have and whether these signals have been carrying on for a longer time. Now, what are the effects we have spoken about sleep disturbance and definitely we come across many students in college who uh, sleep very late and they get up very late very often they will tell you that I uh, got up at 11 o'clock, 11 a.m. because I slept at 4. Now, the question is that because you slept at 4, you got up at uh, 11 or rather I should say the, that is the way they think, but otherwise actually it is because you got up at 11 that you slept at 4. So, these things they need to, there is this uh, delayed uh, sleep uh, problem that very often happens to uh, college students. So, this is the first signal that things are not in order. Avoidance behavior as I was speaking of uh, anxiety avoidance behavior uh, very often leads to absenteeism. We were talking about the first case where uh, the fear of facing a teacher or fear of facing the class very often leads to absenteeism and poor ac academic performance. So, stress may take its impact, mature its impact on academics, mm, on uh, health. So, like we have already, speak, already spoken about headaches and uh, irritable bowel syndrome, clinical uh, depression and anxiety disorders and several times may also lead to suicide, when the student feels that I cannot deal with things anymore there is no hope for me. Now, the other effects could be something of when there is isolation, when there is withdrawing from uh, uh, social interactions, then moving into other aspects to keep that individual engaged and remove all the other anxieties from his head, from his mind. So, we often come across the student having internet, college student having internet addiction, games addiction and also uh, taking resort to in alcoholism and other substance use. Now, several times we see that even peer pressure may start alcoholism and substance use, but later on that becomes a way of dealing with stress. So, this mm, we must look out for these things. So, be it the behavioral symptoms or be it the physical signs, if we are uh, if you are a student or if you are a ward, uh, guardian of a student. Now, several uh, in several college settings to deal with stress there are many programs on stress management and resilience building that are being carried out. In the previous session uh, I spoke about in module 4 I spoke about resilience and there I just spoke about hardiness and um, I think 
uh, it is very important uh, to work on resilience building for resilience actually means bouncing back from stress. We come across uh, individuals who uh, will deal with stress effectively and come back no matter what the situation is, while there are others who in a stressful situation give in. We have studied about the personality variables, but it is also very important to work on resilience. So, you could look up the resilience studies, I am just mentioning this a few studies that are carried on across the world. So, the resilience this is a picture uh, from the resilience uh, consortium, this is the web page, home page of the resilience consortium that is carried out by several uh, US universities and um, they uh, all have their programs and in this uh, website you will uh, see, uh, you will come across several strategies to deal uh, with stress and also build your resilience. Okay. So, uh, in Stanford, that is a wonderful thing that they carry out where uh, you know they talk about how um, uh, what was your worst grade. So, there will be uh, the, there are teachers putting up their worst grades. So, that just reminds you that uh, it is uh, uh, you are not the only one who is uh, had a uh, bad time you know. People have had bad times, bad patches in their lives, but they have just grown out of it and come out of it and succeeded. So, you can check out this uh, website uh, on the resilience consortium. This is another one from the Australian government and uh, they work on student resilience and well being. This is also a very interesting site and you will uh, get a lot of information on uh, building up your resilience dealing with stress. And um, regarding resilience college studies in India, um, we are in IIT Kharagpur, we have a, a project on resilience building and currently we are working on uh, designing modules to work uh, to deal effectively with stress and um, build up uh, your resilience and bouncing out up against bouncing back from adversities. So, very soon we hope that uh, this will be available uh, for use and uh, definitely you can take a look at that. Um, so, finally, to summarize today's session, we have spoken about the stresses in college life, about the signals of stress and how it how stress affects the individuals and we have spoken about resilience studies. I hope you will take a look at this and this model module of scientific foundations of stress was interesting to you and um, even the assignments will be so. Thank you.